It's mid-March as I'm making this video, which means we're only a few months away from WWDC, Apple's annual event, where they announce the next version of iOS. With the recent news that the new version of Siri has been indefinitely delayed, it is anyone's guess what we're actually gonna get this year. But while we wait, I thought I'd share some iPhone tips and tricks that you can make use of right now, features that I think most people don't even know about. Okay, let's get into it. On my home screen, you can see that I have a couple of widgets, and while they're really useful, they do sometimes take up a bit too much screen space. It would be great if there was a way to organize them into folders, just like you can with apps. Well, there is actually a way to do this, and there are two different methods depending on how much control you want. The first way is to create a smart stack. To do this, tap and hold on the home screen for just a second until the edit menu appears. Then tap the plus button in the upper left corner and choose add widget. At the top of the list, you should see smart stack. Tap on it, then add it to your home screen. Once it's on your screen, you can scroll through the different widgets in your stack by swiping up or down. If you want to edit the stack, long press on it for a second and choose edit stack. Here you can remove widgets by tapping the minus button next to any of them, or you can drag and reorder them to customize how they appear. If you scroll down, you'll also see an add widget option. Tapping the plus button in the upper left will bring up a list of all your compatible widgets, allowing you to add new ones to your stack. So you can really get granular with how you set this up. But there's actually an even quicker way to do this if all you want is to combine two or three widgets into a single stack. Instead of creating a smart stack manually, just long press on an existing widget on your home screen until you can drag it around, just like you do with apps. Then simply hover over another widget and drop it on to create a stack. You can repeat this process to add more widgets to the stack, and once it's created, you can swipe through them to rotate between them. Here are some useful tips related to editing your home screen. In my current example, I've got my main home screen, and if I swipe to the right, I have a second screen of apps, and if I swipe again, I have even more apps on a third screen. Now, you can drag apps between different screens, and an easy way to do this is to tap and hold on an app to start dragging it. Instead of hovering it all the way to one side, which can be a bit slow, use another thumb or finger to swipe between pages in the background. This allows you to quickly move between different home screen pages and drop the app wherever you want. But here's something you might not know. If you tap on the dot just above the dock at the bottom of your screen, this opens a view where you can enable or disable entire screens of apps. So let's say you have a screen full of app tiles that you don't actually need on your home screen all the time. Instead of deleting everything, you can just deselect that page and it will no longer be visible. If you wanna completely remove a page, you can tap the minus button to delete it. Now, doing this doesn't delete the apps. You can still find them by using search or by going into the app library. And here's one last trick. On this app page management screen, you can tap and hold on an entire app page and move it around to reorder your home screen pages. So if you've always wanted to change the order of your app pages without having to rearrange everything manually, this is the quickest way to do it. Do you ever watch these tips videos and think, how am I supposed to remember all this? If so, you should definitely check out the brand new training portal that I've just launched, iPhone Essentials Plus. It's more than 100 tips for the iPhone, with another 100 being added over the next few weeks, covering every aspect of your iPhone. Each module contains lessons, and each lesson contains a tutorial video, a step-by-step -step guide with screenshots, and a downloadable PDF. So no matter how you like to learn, you're covered. You can work through each lesson in order, or you can pick and choose what you want to learn at any given time. There's no ads, no sponsors, just content, and you can access it on your iPhone or your tablet or home computer. Plus, no monthly subscription. This is a one-time only payment with lifelong access to all of the content, including all future updates. If this sounds good to you, scan the QR code on screen or click the link in the description of this video. You probably already know about Live Text, the feature on your iPhone that allows you to select text within an image, copy and paste it elsewhere, or look up more information about it. But what you might not realize is that if your iPhone supports Live Text, and that's any device that can run iOS 18, you can actually access Live Text directly within the camera app without even taking a photo. For example, here I've opened the camera app and pointed my phone at some text. You'll notice a live text button appear in the bottom right corner. I don't need to take a picture. I can just tap on this button and my phone will instantly recognize the text. 
From here, I can tap copy all in the bottom left corner to copy the text to my clipboard, or I can access additional tools from the menu bar above the text. I can copy the text, translate it, share it, or press look up to search the web for more information on that particular term. It's much quicker and easier than taking a picture and selecting the text afterwards. Another useful feature in the camera app is scanning QR codes. You simply point your camera at a QR code and a URL or action will pop up for you to tap. However, this doesn't always work as effectively as it should. And if you scan QR codes regularly, there is a much better way to do this. Go to control center, enter edit mode. And if you don't already have a QR scanner in your control center, tap add a control at the bottom. Then in the search controls field at the top, type scan. You'll see an option called scan code under both capture and utilities. Tap on either one to add it to your control center. Now, the next time that you need to scan a QR code, instead of relying on your camera app, just swipe down to access control center and tap the scan code button. Your phone will immediately detect the QR code and perform the associated task. If you're enjoying the content here, why not sign up for my weekly newsletter, which is all about tech news and tips delivered free to your inbox each Friday. Sign up via the QR code on screen or the link in the description. If you sometimes find it difficult to read text on your iPhone, there are a couple of text related accessibility features that can make things much easier and even better, you can add them to Control Center for quick access. The first feature is text size and it does exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to quickly adjust the text size on your iPhone without having to go through settings every time. To enable this, open Control Center, long press to enter edit mode, then tap add a control at the bottom of the screen. In the search bar at the top, type text and you'll see an option called text size. Tap on it and it will be added to your control center. Now the next time that you open control center, you'll see a text size option. You can either long press to access granular text size controls or simply use the slider to adjust the text size up or down. As you adjust, you'll notice the text size in control center itself gets larger so you can immediately see the difference. If you long press on the text size option, you'll also get an additional setting where you can choose whether to adjust the text size for all apps or just for the home screen and system menus. If you frequently need to change text size on the fly, this is a great way to do it quickly. The second feature is hover typing, which makes text easier to read while typing. To enable this, go back into control center, long press to enter edit mode and tap add a control. In the search bar, type hover, then select hover typing to add it to your control center. Now, whenever you open control center, you can tap to enable or disable hover typing. Once enabled, if you go to an app like messages and tap into the text composition field, nothing will look different at first. But as soon as you start typing, you'll see a floating text box appear above the keyboard, giving you a much clearer enlarged version of what you're typing. By default, the floating text box displays text at the same size and font, but on a black background, which can make it easier to read but you can customize this even further. To do this, go into settings, tap accessibility, then keyboards and typing and select hover typing. Here you can customize the floating text box in several ways. You can tap into size and increase or decrease the text size. You can also go into font and select a different font style. There's even an option to change the display colors so you can adjust the background, text and border colors to whatever works best for you. If you ever want to reset everything back to default, there's a reset to default button at the bottom. Now, if I go back into my messages app and start typing, the floating text box now reflects all of my changes, making it much clearer and easier to read. Everything still works as normal. I can tap and hold the space bar to move the cursor and make edits wherever I need. So if you don't need larger text everywhere, but you just want a clearer view of what you're typing, hover typing is a really useful tool to know about. And if you ever decide that you don't need it anymore, just go back to control center and tap hover typing to turn it off. If you're listening to a podcast and hear a section that you really want to share with a friend, chances are you don't expect them to listen to the entire one hour episode just to find that specific moment. There are actually a couple of ways to share a podcast from an exact timestamp so that the person you're sending it to can start listening from the section that you want them to hear. If your screen looks like this while the podcast is playing, just tap the pause button. You can use the back 15 seconds button to rewind a little and get to the start of the section that you want to share. Once you're at the right spot, tap the menu just above the play bar, then choose share episode. When you do this, you'll see an option that says from start. 
tap this, and you can then adjust the timestamp to exactly where your playhead is currently at. Now, when the person receives the podcast link and taps on it, it will begin playing at that exact time instead of from the very beginning. But there's actually an even better way to do this. Instead of using the share button, press the speech bubble icon in the bottom left corner. This will bring up the podcast transcript, allowing you to scroll through and find the exact section that you want to share. Once you find the section, tap and hold on the text for a second, and you'll see an option that says share from, along with the exact timestamp where the section appears. Tap that, choose messages, mail, or any other sharing method, and just like that, your friend will be able to start listening from the exact part of the episode that you wanted to share. You probably already know that if you're reading an article in Safari and you want your phone to read it out loud, you can do this by tapping the reader button in the address bar and then choosing listen to page. Your phone will then begin reading the article using Siri's voice. But if you prefer to do this without pressing so many buttons, there is an even easier way. Instead of going through the reader mode menu, just long press the power button on the side of your device to access Siri and say, read me this article. Siri will immediately start reading the article aloud, allowing you to listen hands-free without needing to navigate through any extra menus. Your iPhone has a really impressive search feature for music artists. And I think most people have absolutely no idea that this even exists. To access it, just use Spotlight Search. You can do this by swiping down on the home screen or tapping the search button on your home page. Then in the search box, type in the name of the music artist that you want to find out about. So for example, if I type in Kendrick, my iPhone will assume that I'm looking for Kendrick Lamar and he'll appear as the top hit. Tapping on his name pulls up a ton of information all in one place. At the top, I can jump straight to songs and albums on Apple Music. And if I scroll down, there's a new section, videos, and even quick facts about him. Further down, there are direct links to his social media profiles, and there's even a listen on section that lets me open his music on other streaming services like Spotify. One of the most interesting features here is the concert section, which is about halfway down the page. If I tap show more, I can see all of his upcoming tour dates and even filter by region. For example, if I tap UK, I can instantly see all the shows that he has scheduled here this year. And if I want to book tickets, I can tap on a show and my iPhone will take me straight to Ticketmaster. But this doesn't just work for music artists, it also works for film and TV. So if a friend recommends a show that they think I should check out, instead of going to Google and searching for it, I can do exactly the same thing in Spotlight Search and instantly pull up everything I need to know about the show. When I search for a TV show or film, I get a full overview, including links to the cast and crew, a synopsis, and most importantly, all the different ways to watch it. At the top of the screen, my iPhone will show me the streaming services where it's available, making it easy to jump straight into the show. Now, as expected, my phone will try to push me towards Apple TV first, but it is nice to see that it also includes third-party services like Prime Video, Paramount Plus, and other platforms. So instead of opening a web browser and searching manually, you can find everything in seconds with Spotlight Search. The final tip requires Apple intelligence to work, which is why I saved it until last. But if your iPhone has Apple intelligence features, let me show you a couple of really useful ways that you can use it for identity protection in your photos. You might already know that you can use the cleanup feature in the Photos app to remove unwanted background objects, but there are a few other things that you can do as well. For example, let's say that I've got a photo with someone's face in it and I wanna blur it out for privacy reasons. To do this, I'd tap the edit button at the bottom, then choose clean up. I'd pinch to zoom in on the photo and then simply circle the person's face. You'll see a box appear at the bottom, letting you know that identity protection has been applied. Once I tap done, the face is blurred and the image is saved with the edit applied. Another example would be a car on the street where the license plate is clearly visible. Again, I can use Apple intelligence to fix this. I'd tap edit, choose clean up, zoom in on the license plate, and circle it just like before. In this case, Apple intelligence will completely remove the license plate and blend it into the background of the vehicle, making it look as though the plate was never there in the first place. This feature is also really useful when dealing with sensitive documents like receipts. So for example, let's say I've got a receipt and there's a section that I don't want to share in an image. I can tap edit, choose clean up and zoom in on the section that I want to blur out. By simply scribbling over the text, Apple Intelligence will either completely remove it and blend it into the background of the receipt, or it will distort the text so that it's no longer readable as actual text. 
So there you go, eight tips for the iPhone that I think most people have no idea about. What did you think? Anything here you didn't know? Or anything that you think I should have included? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.